As has been hinted since the appearance was set last week, Hulk Hogan has officially announced his retirement from wrestling on The Tonight Show Thursday, while continuing to work his presidential campaign angle announcing that he's running in the 2000 election. Hogan said that now after a great career with his family secure it's time to move on, thanking the public for the massive support he received after his announcement was made with him getting another round of big media coverage with every major publication reporting the retirement as a shoot. Hogan said that he owed WCW one more farewell appearance with the target date set for the Big Georgia Dome Nitro on January 4, before taking shots at Jesse Ventura saying that everybody told him that if Jesse can be governor when he was a little minnow in their industry while he was the big fish, Hogan should run for president. When then asked if he would like Ventura to be his running mate, Hogan joked that he prefers to go against Ventura as he beat him every time they faced each other and would easily do it again. With Hogan now written off TV WCW announced the new leader of NWO Hollywood with Scott Steiner taking over the group. Steiner started by saying that everybody in the building should put their heads down for a moment of silence in honor of the greatest star the business has ever seen in Hollywood Hogan. Steiner said that with Hogan's blessing he's now the leader of the NWO and under him the group will take care of business as they always did, with Scott Hall as their first target. Unlike previous weeks when WCW used the unopposed hour as a filler to hype future events and save the top names for the head-to-head -head period, this week WCW loaded up the first hour with big star power segments coming one after another, including a TV title change with Conan beating Jericho to win the belt to a big reaction, with Ric Flair coming out moments later for a response promo after the Wyndham turn. Flair had a message to Bischoff telling him to listen wherever he is, officially challenging him to a match. Flair said that according to Eric he's old but there's a difference between getting old and getting great, naming all the people past and present who headlined and made the company under Bischoff, calling him out to settle it face to face in the ring once and for all. Scott Hall was out next responding to the NWO's challenge of a tag match against him saying that he doesn't have a lot of friends right now but he will still take them on alone, bringing out Nash to accept the challenge saying that despite their issues he will team up with him tonight, setting up a big tag match with the Outsiders teaming for the first time in months. Bret Hart came out to open the crossover segment with his US title rematch against Paige hyped since last week, saying that since he was injured in a match last Monday his doctors are not allowing him to wrestle tonight, bringing out Paige to question it asking Bret if he's bailing out after challenging him to a main event already booked, accusing him of faking injury to get out of facing him before Bret eventually agreed to make it an ODQ match as the quarter which also featured the start of Eddie vs Kidman saw WCW opening with its biggest audience in a month doing a 4.2 rating. After the shovel shot and embalming attempt in the last two weeks, Steve Austin arrived in the Baltimore arena calling out Undertaker and Paul Bearer. Austin said that he's not waiting 13 days until the rock bottom pay-per-view and before the night is over Taker will wear the shovel on his head, starting a show long angle with Austin going after Taker and Bearer while they go after Kane. With the wrestling boom featuring in every platform in the last month, one of the most high profile coverage to date came during the week with four separate covers on the highest selling publication in TV Guide doing a cover story on wrestling's exploding popularity with its prime time shows taking over cable television. The covers which featured Austin Goldberg Hogan and Taker, saw JR taking shots at the WCW side telling viewers to get the Austin and Taker covers quick before they sell out or they would be forced to select from the now-retired Hogan or the Austin wannabe Goldberg.
Eddie Guerrero vs. Billy Kidman going 10 minutes open night rose second quarter, with Eric Bischoff coming out for the response promo to Flair. Eric said that he will give Flair an opportunity to get a match against him if Dean Malenko can beat Barry Windham with Dusty Rhodes as the special referee. While that was going on Raw continued with a fast-paced format advancing multiple angles in a 15-minute period, first with the corporation coming out during the Outlaws vs. Brood tag match to tease the Outlaws joining the group, Henry and D'Lo preparing to go out to meet China, while backstage Austin was still looking after Taker and Bearer who ended up locking him in a freezer room, with Taker and Bearer coming out for a promo minutes later as Taker hyped his buried alive match with Austin before calling out Kane, setting up Bearer trying to take him out to a mental institution. Nitro had a Wrath Squash match rebounding from the Nash loss last week, along with Bigelow buying a ticket to sit in the crowd with security, while Raw entered the 5 rating range having the continuation of Henry and D'Lo on the way to the date with China. With WWF creative taking wrestling storytelling to a level never seen before in the industry, the comedic Henry and D'Lo skits with both putting on strong performances again emphasize Draw as a mainstream TV show appealing to a wide audience from different genres, with The Quarter also featuring X-Pac calling out Shawn Michaels for the first confrontation between them since Waltman replaced Michaels in DX in March. Michaels and Waltman went back and forth with Michaels saying that he would take out Waltman but he's now the commissioner not an active wrestler telling him that if he looks at him the wrong way he will send him back to the money pit in Atlanta, booking X-Pac vs Shamrock for later and closing the promo saying that he was DX before DX was cool as the original leader of the group. Goldberg's limousine arrived in time for the Star Kid contract signing coming out to the ring followed by Nash along with the Wolfpack. Goldberg and Nash signed the contract to officially set the Starcade main event hyped to do one of the biggest pay-per-views in company history, with Bigelow jumping the guardrail moments later trying to get in the ring and taken out of the building by security. The road to Starcade would also see WCW starting a string of shows unparalleled in resting television history as starting next Monday in the Houston Astrodome from December 7 to January 4, the company will run three big stadium night row shows in front of huge crowds in Houston, St. Louis and Atlanta, with Houston and St. Louis already nearing 30,000 tickets sold while the Atlanta Georgia Dome is set for 40,000 with 20,000 tickets already sold, meaning the company will have close or over 100,000 people for just three regular weekly TV shows in unprecedented numbers never seen before. WCW opened its third hour having two matches in the quarter with Booker vs Mike Enos and Lex Luger vs Brian Adams, while in the middle taking two commercial breaks with just a short segment in between of Bigelow still not leaving the building calling for Goldberg to face him outside, as Raw crossed over 10pm with Mankind vs Bossman going 6 minutes for the hardcore title with Michaels on commentary taking shots at Foley about how he wanted to copy him with the Hell in a Cell match and now with the latter, including rating his moves on a scale of 1 to 10. With Mankind looking to have the match one Rock ran out laying him out to give Bossman the win and another title for the corporation, as Rock Bossman and Michaels beat down Mankind post-match. The rest of the quarter saw Taker and Kane brawling backstage with Taker laying out Kane until Austin got Taker back with a shovel shot to the head, along with Dwayne Gill coming out with his football team against Mark Marrow. 
the Mankind vs. Bossman match and the rest of the top of the hour quarters are all jumping around a million viewers to a show high 5.7 rating compared to Night Rose 3.2, the biggest margin of the night. With their all product hotter than ever, the company's momentum was rolling across the board with business picking up in every department including last night's heat show drawing its all-time record 4.5 rating, coming in front of a sold-out 18,000 crowd with the show building to a main event reveal of a guest commentator for a Shamrock and Bossman vs. Mankind and Snow tag match which turned out to be Rock doing commentary for the match that saw the quarter drawing heat's highest ever segment with a 5.3 rating. Night Row rebounded back after Raw's peak quarter jumping over 800,000 viewers to a 3.9 rating for the match to decide the Flair vs Bischoff match ending up with Dusty double-crossing Eric to disqualify Wyndham and officially set up Flair vs Bischoff for Starcade, in what would also be Flair's first match back since March. Michaels was back out on commentary for the match he booked earlier with Shamrock vs X-Pac, going five minutes until Bossman's interference to bring out the returning Triple H for the save to a big reaction making his return after months out with knee injury including the first tease of a Michaels vs Hunter feud with them now on opposite sides after not being seen on screen together since Wrestlemania 14. WCW's big quarter of the night came between 10.30 to 45 with the Outsiders teaming up for the first time on TV since March against Scott Steiner and Horace Hogan. After the last few months of them feuding with Hall turning on Nash in May, the crowd reactions during that period which popped huge every time Hall and Nash teased the Outsiders reunion made it clear that the audience didn't want to see a split of the Hall and Nash chemistry which was seen as above a TV storyline. The Hall and Nash vs Steiner and Horace tag went 8 minutes with them getting heat on Hall to set up a Nash hot tag for the finish, as the match jumped big with over 900,000 viewers to a peak 4.7 rating, breaking Raw's 44 segment streak of winning every quarter since November 2nd to beat Raw with a 4.7 to 4.6 rating margin, WCW's first quarter win since October 26th. With Bigelow calling him out in the last tower, Goldberg ran out to start another wild Goldberg-Bigelow brawl in the parking lot outside the UTC arena, ending up with Goldberg escaping security to spear Bigelow on the grass. At the same time Raw had the final Henry China segment with Henry clearing out the bar, along with a Val vs Singh match and Shane McMahon's merchandise advertisement with Sable saying that Sable started on TV plugging the company items and Vince took her to superstar status, coming out to promote a new WWF fragrance. Night Rose main event saw the injured Bret Hart against Paige going 4 minutes, with the no DQ stipulation setting up Giants interference to take down Paige with Bret winning back the US title. With the original plan for Starcade being an Hart vs Paige match after Hogan was written off storylines, the company switched things to set up Giant as Paige's next opponent with Bret taken off house shows during the week due to a groin injury, 
as WCW with another strong first hour drawing a 5 rating along with its first quarter win in weeks maintained most of its audience with a 4.3 overall rating. After the big Nitro quarter Raw picked up over 600,000 viewers in a direct turnover to take back the lead with the Rock vs Al Snow title match bumping Raw from a 4.6 to 5.1 while WCW's main event dropped from a 4.7 to 4.1. Rock and Snow went 5 minutes with Rock having the match won to set up a memorable spot with him giving head the corporate elbow to pop the crown eventually going over with the rock bottom to bring Mankind Shamrock Bossman and the Job Squad for the post-match brawl two weeks from the Rock Mankind pay-per-view title rematch. A few minutes from the top of the hour Paul Bearer realized that it was Taker who was taken to the nuthouse with Austin and Kane dragging him out to the ring for the show closing segment. Austin told Bearer that he was the one who sent Taker to the crazy house and he can't come out and save him now, saying that he watched what Taker and Bearer did to him last week over and over with Bearer trying to get out of it blaming everything on Taker as Austin teased setting him on fire and embalming him before having a better idea dragging Bear outside the building to end up with them throwing him down the sewer. With Nitro not going into an overrun and ending exactly at 11, Raw's Austin Kane and Bear segment went unopposed jumping over 1.5 million viewers to a 6.5 rating, with Raw overall with a broadcast packed with multiple storyline advancing angles jumped back into near record levels drawing a 5 overall rating.